Today I'm going to talk about writing advice from Maggie O'Farrell. She's written numerous really successful novels, including After You'd Gone and most recently Hamnet, which was just last year. I found loads of writing wisdom in interviews and in articles that she's written, so here's Maggie O'Farrell's tips for writers. Number one, you have to think of your fears and doubts as your friends because they're useful. I think that's really good advice for writers and it has more than one application because I think in this context she probably means in terms of life experience and what fuels your story and what you're writing about, especially if you're writing from the heart. I think she's saying to expose your weaknesses and focus on things that have caused you harm or hurt or trauma is a good route to storytelling and I think that's probably true in a lot of cases. Those things can fuel you to write a genuine story, an authentic story about something that you feel passionate about and that can never be a bad thing. And perhaps if you can't make those fears and doubts your friends, because that is a hugely difficult thing to do, I think then perhaps this advice might convince you at least not to avoid them or sidestep them because you're worried about writing them or you worry that your writing can't be equal to them. I think we can also look at it from a practical perspective when it comes to actual writing. Your fears and doubts might be the things that you feel like you're going to struggle to write. And Maybe that is just those fears and doubts, but maybe it's dialogue, maybe it's world setting, anything like that. If you feel like it's a weakness, I always think it's good to hit those things head on because the more you try and the more you practice with them, the better you get and suddenly you realize it's not a weakness anymore. It sounds really weird, but I do think of weaknesses as friends because all they are is pre-packaged, ready to go ways to improve. They're things that you can clearly identify rather than wondering about. The things you know you need to get better at, so they're right there, ready for you to do it. I think in both contexts, this advice makes a lot of sense, so definitely agree with it. Number two, don't worry too much about knowing what you're doing at the beginning. You can start in the middle if you want, just put the words down. Really good advice, especially for beginners, I think. I struggled with this when I was first starting out with writing, as many people do, because the opening of a book or a story is so important and everybody always says the opening is so important. You've got to grab your reader, you've got to give them a reason to keep going, you've got to make them invested in your story. But if you've never written anything before, that is such a tall order. I think with pretty much every longer piece of work I've ever done, I've changed the beginning multiple times. I've gone back to it and reworked it when I've figured out more about what my story is. It's never remained the same lines as what I put down. Short stuff does, but longer stuff definitely changes. Amending those opening lines, of course, is assuming that that's still gonna be where your story starts. It might not be. You might change it to, you know, something that came before or something came after. You might delete the entire first chapter. You don't really know, you've just gotta start writing and see where it goes. You've gotta have something in order to edit it and to build on it. What I especially like about what she said though is that you can start in the middle of your story if you want. There's nothing wrong with doing that whatsoever. If there's a point in your story that you're excited about or if it's the thing that prompted you to start writing this story in general and you're struggling to write an opening or figure out how you're gonna get there and you don't feel motivated to just spend 50,000 words trying to get to the one point that you wanna write, just write the part that you want to write. Because once you have that down, it might matter to you so much that you're willing to go through that first 50,000 words and willing to find all that because you've already written this part that you really love. Or else you might find that when you write the part that you really love, that is where the beginning of the story should be. Or that it might not be a longer piece of work, it might just be a short story, or it might be a novella. There's tons to gain by just writing something without thinking about how it fits into everything. Just get it down and you never know what it could turn into. So definitely agree with this too. Number three, stories will always find their own shape. They're like water. They'll fill whatever vacancy they're given. That's an interesting point, I think, that links into the last one in that it emphasizes that we don't always have a huge amount of control over the shape of our story. Before now, I've started out to write a piece of flash fiction and it's turned into something longer and the opposite has also happened, probably more often than not. I tend to write or intend to write something longer and end up with a really short piece of writing it does happen but more than that especially when it comes to long fiction i found that even if i didn't have all of the parts of the story even if i didn't have a fully fleshed out story in front of me as i've written it's just filled in things have expanded to fill whatever space that i wanted it to occupy or that it needed to occupy whenever i've tried to control or artificially influence the length of a piece of writing it's always ended badly for me longer works have ended up feeling really thin 
shorter works have felt really compressed and compact. If a story needs more space, I think you tend to notice that pretty quickly. But if a story isn't going to be as long as you initially thought or you hoped, it can sometimes take thousands of words to figure that out. And by that point, you know, invested in a story and that can be a difficult thing. Over the past couple of years, I found that looking at literary journals or small publishers or small publications, they don't all prize 100,000 word novels. It, you know, there's a lot of space to sell shorter work or to get shorter work published. Collections of short stories, flash fiction novellas, normal novellas, there is a place for all of that stuff. If the story just doesn't feel like it's gonna fit out that length, then it's not meant to be. And anything you add to it, in my experience at least, has weakened the story rather than strengthened it. Unless you get some kind of lightning strike of a good idea that you know is gonna fill out the rest of the book. That's probably different, but just adding filler in is probably what I'm talking about. And I wouldn't recommend that necessarily. Let the story fill out its own shape, like she says. I think that's really good advice. Number four, if you have trouble switching from your real world to your fictional one, try listening to the same piece of music over and over again until whatever surrounds you fades away. I've never tried this specifically with one piece of music over and over again, but I do tend to listen to the same playlists or records when I write so I can understand what she means. It definitely does help you get into the right mindset for writing. And I think it's less about music and more about how relaxed or how focused your mind is. You see it in every article about writer's block online. They're always suggesting go for a walk, have a shower, just sit and think about things. It's so that you can pause your mind, give your mind less to work on as you're you know, moving around, doing things, concentrating on things allow your mind a little more space in order to try and create something. Slowing down when it comes to problem solving definitely works better for me than just hyper focusing on something and trying to work it out because I tend to just find I grind to a halt when that happens. I definitely recommend listening to music while you write though, uh, especially if you've never tried it before. It could be the thing that unlocks a bit of creativity within you. I know some people don't like listening to music with lyrics because it interferes with their train of thought and I get that but you can also try instrumental music or film soundtracks that's what I like to do and you tend to find it does give you ideas sometimes or it does set your mind in that right mode like she talks about it helps you to let go of your real world and enter into your fictional one for sure so definitely agree with what she's saying here number five towards the end it will be graft that gets you through Know that you will redraft and rewrite your work 30, 40, 50 times. You'll examine and agonise over every comma, every semicolon, every adverb. I think this one is probably more to do with the individual writer than the overall craft of writing. But whenever I've written a really long piece of work, like a novel, and I've written about seven novels now, it's definitely been graft that gets me to the end of it. There's definitely a bit of excitement to finally finish the story mixed into it, but more often than not, you just really want to get it done and you're just putting pen to paper or hands to keyboards or whatever just to try to get finally get rid of this thing that you've been writing for potentially years, at least months. However, the part about redrafting your work 30, 40, 50 times I think is more down to individual writers, as I said. I don't really redraft stuff that many times. I don't. Re I mean, it's probably hyperbole. She probably doesn't mean you're actually going to rewrite a novel 50 times, but... I tend to find I try to write very accurately and quite slowly the first in the first draft and then after that I'll edit two or three times maybe but I won't really change all of that much I'll just be making sure of the flow of the story and making sure really that I haven't missed anything and that there aren't errors as opposed to actually changing the phrasing or the shape of the story. I think the part about agonizing over every comma and adverb is really true for me when it comes to short fiction so I think a piece of punctuation can affect how a 100 word story feels and that's what I'm most often writing at the moment, that and a thousand word stories. But in a novel, I don't think it has as much influence, so I wouldn't really tend to worry about it in a larger piece of work. I definitely wouldn't agonise over it in something that long, but I probably would in a 100 word story just because I can see more clearly. It never really goes out of your eye line because you can see the entire story on one page. You can always see that one little thing that's not quite right and I think that's definitely counts as agonizing. I think the thing to take away from this though and a useful way to look at it is that nothing you write no matter what kind of length of story you're writing is permanent. Everything is 
available to be changed. Everything is optional. You can remove things, you can add things in. Nothing has to stay the same. So don't feel as though something is, you know, fixed in concrete and you have to curve your story around it because you just can't move it. You absolutely can. It might take some rewriting and some structural changes that you don't really want to make but if it's going to be for the good of the story then it's worth doing. I don't like editing, it's not my favourite part of writing, in fact it's my least favourite part of writing but every time I do it it's really useful. So not all writers will redraft that many times or focus on such small things within their writing quite as much but I definitely think we all have a, a little bit of that at least in our writing so I agree with it. Number six, Every book teaches you something, at the same time as filling you with a desire to put this new knowledge into practice, to try again. It's all part of the process. I like this one. This is about the never-ending chase of writing and improvement and development. It might be slightly unhealthy of me, but the way I approach my writing is that everything I put down on paper, I want it to be better than the last thing. I want it to be the best thing I've ever written. And then when I come to write something else, I want to top that and make it even better. And I know that's unhealthy, but I don't, if I don't exactly manage it, then I'm not crushed or anything. It's just a way for me to make sure I don't stagnate and to keep going. And I think this might be what she's talking about. You can learn something when you're writing a longer piece of work. You can approach a piece of the story in a way that you've never done before. And then you think, wow, that's really good. I like that a lot. I didn't use it as much as I, I could have. Maybe in this next story, I can use that a lot more. And that'll be an even better story because of it. And then you write that story and you discover other things during the course of that. And then you move to another story and try to use all of those things. It never ends. And it's not always improvement, I don't think. Sometimes it's just changing how you do something to a different approach or a different format. Something that you knew about but never used before and thought maybe wasn't for you. You can definitely do that. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're getting any better or any worse as a writer. It's just changing things. But whether it is an improvement thing or it's just a sideways move that just helps you write a richer story in some way, there really is never an end point. It never really comes to the point where you're like, oh, I've learned everything. I'm as good as I'm ever going to be now, so I'll just put all this stuff into practice. It never happens like that. You forget things that you already know. You learn things that you didn't. It's a never-ending cycle. And if you're uncomfortable with that, then you'll find the more you write, the more you accept it. I think. Writers, I think, tend to be perfectionists. I certainly am. And sometimes that can be a real help, but most of the time I think it's more likely to be a hindrance. But I think if you're able to accept that you can never be 100% efficient and you can't be a perfect writer, I think as long as you know that and you can work within the bounds of that limitation, then it tends, it tends to just work for you and help you keep going and it doesn't become something that drags you down and stops you from writing. There's no real final form for a writer, I don't think. At least in my experience, there isn't. I just tend to find I get incrementally better every so often and I'm just gonna chase that for the whole of my writing career, if you like. Anyway, I hope this was useful. If it was, consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching as always and happy writing.